us about everything disability. Today we have Jonathan Shaw with me. Hello. Tim Lackland. Hey. And uh, EBD. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Uh, and myself, David D. Thank you, David. Thank you for introducing. Uh, so, uh, Timothy, what are we going to be talking about today? Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about a bit of a heavy topic, so I'll just give a content warning before we kick things off. Um, we're going to be discussing how to overcome disability discrimination. So, uh, as we speak of this tonight, we might um, talk about some examples of disability discrimination or just general information around that. So if that's a topic that you find distressing, um, you're more than welcome to leave now. But otherwise, we're going to dive right into it. Okay, so, good stuff. Yeah. And please, if anyone wants to write comments, please do do so. And yeah, and look, you um, share your experiences, <laughs> please do so. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, David. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty sensitive topic. Uh, has anyone here ever, I guess, uh, come across discrimination? discrimination? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think, mean, yeah, I think it's something. Has, yeah. Give me an example. Yeah, it's not, it's, not, it's not a good feeling, is it? It's not a good feeling at all. Nah. Yeah, David, uh, give us an example of a time you've come, ever come, or you've come across disability discrimination. Well, some people look at me and think i'll fake it yep okay <laughs> and why did they assume that i don't know maybe because i i'm i've gotten good at walking around with my disability and i dress how, does, how does that make you feel david well it makes me I don't let it get me down because at the end, if they think I'm not disabled, I haven't got a disability, then I guess mm. they've got a problem that I probably, I, I'll, I'll put it in a different way where it makes me feel like, all right, I guess, I guess if they don't think I'm uh, I've got a disability, then I guess I'm they're either jealous of me or mm. or they mm. I, I, I try to motivate myself better because yeah it's no it's all good it's, it's not a good feeling at all is it david no no yeah. no, no, no you've got but, yeah just before we do move on um, we got a comment from uh, sarah hello sarah thank you for joining us so she goes, hey, yes, just recently I had my worst ever experience. So if you, if you, yeah, if you want to share, let us know. Um, but yeah, look, uh, that, and that's the reality for people with disability. They, they come across discrimination most of the time, even when they're out there in their community. Uh, Jim, yeah, uh, have yeah. you ever had any form of discrimination? Yeah, I've come across discrimination heaps of times. I've been uh, a wheelchair user for about 14 years now. And just recently, um, I've had discrimination from um, a business. And mm. to not go into too much detail, but I guess it, it will serve as a good example because I'm speaking of how to overcome um, disability discrimination. So I have a younger sister, she's two years younger than me and she has uh, autism and intellectual disability and the other weekend she wanted to go ice skating. So we went ice skating and my sister hadn't been ice skating for a while so she was unsure of how to get around the rink and uh, she was quite slow and holding on to the edges and uh, I'm in a wheelchair when I go out and um, I asked if I could go on the ice to, um, actually, sorry, ADHD makes my storytelling a bit all over the place. When I first went to the ice rink, they told me that I wouldn't be able to go on the ice 
and that they have a wheelchair only session that I could go to. But I told them that I wasn't, um, it wasn't going to be me ice skating, it was going to be my sister because I thought my sister could skate by herself. But when we put her on the ice, she was unsure of herself. So I had to go have a big conversation with the manager and say, by you saying I can't go on the ice to go help my sister is disability discrimination because she has a companion card and I serve as her support worker at, at that time, like I'm supporting her to, to do what she wants. So after I had that conversation, they did allow me to go on the ice and, and skate with her and that was all fine and dandy from there. But the fact that I have to even advocate for myself to, to go onto an ice rink, it, it seems a bit ridiculous to me that you, the, they also have this like segregation policy, like, oh, you can only come in on a Friday or something to, to be in, in the wheelchair on the ice. So the way that I'm going about overcoming that discrimination is I got a hold of the, uh, the fellow who owns the place and I've written him an email, letting him know gently, like not, not, this is the thing, when you want to tell somebody that they're discriminating, you always have to take a calm, educational approach because sometimes people who discriminate against you, they don't know any better. So if we attack them and have this angry approach first, they're not gonna be very likely to work with us and hear what we have to say. So I said to this fellow quite nicely, uh, I understand that, that you think wheelchair users are a hazard on the ice, but that's not necessarily the case um, because your policy, uh, it, it got in the way of me looking after my sister uh, because I don't think their policy planned for a person with a disability to be supporting a person with a disability. And that that is an assumption that disabled people can't support each other. So there's one issue there. And the, the second issue is not allowing wheelchairs on the ice but also having a separate day where only like wheelchairs can come in so i said that's actually a form of uh, segregation and disability discrimination um i've actually yet to hear back from the fellow but hopefully we can work to some sort of good um i guess solution where he understands that wheelchair users aren't a hazard to people uh, in ice rinks and that, you know, they can skate alongside able-bodied people in, in the sessions. But um, if, for instance, things didn't go well and uh, they got defensive or um, didn't want to exactly meet a, a solution that would benefit people with disabilities and, and make it so we could skate alongside each other equally, that's when I would probably look into contacting someone with a bit more knowledge in the area so maybe a, a disability law firm or potentially even the human rights commission because mm -hmm. it's a case of being discriminated against on the basis of disability and we as people with disabilities in australia we have what's called the um disability act and that the disability discrimination act and that is what is meant to protect us from these types of discrimination there's actually six types of discrimination that can occur for people with disabilities. And I'll, I'll list them now so we can understand them and explore them a bit more. But what we have is the first type is direct discrimination. So um, I believe that's what I'd categorize my experience that I've just explained was I was directly discriminated against because I use a wheelchair. I was told I couldn't go on the ice unless I went on at a certain day and time. Um, and we also have what's called indirect discrimination. Um, that happens when there's like a policy or a way that an organization works and it um, puts people with disabilities at a disadvantage. An Dr. example. Kim, uh, Kim, yeah. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. I know, I know you're in the wheelchair, but have you realized? Maybe people with wheelchairs don't like when other people are on ice while they're on, also. Yeah, it could also be that, but I feel it wasn't necessarily that as the sole reason because they said no wheelchairs at all on the ice during um, regular sessions. And if, if it's maybe, um, maybe, maybe they're thinking about 
case by no, case. No, but I guess the idea of segregating people with disability with the, the community, how does that make you feel, Timothy, being segregated? Yeah, that, that's... Being classified uh, as, as special. Yeah, yeah, that's the part I take issue with. Like, I understand that, you know, he, the, the person running this joint thinks that it's a good thing to have, like, a wheelchair any day, but it is segregation, and I don't think I should be made to attend on a certain day and time just to go do something that somebody who walks could do at any day or time that they please because to me that that fits the definition of discrimination if you're being dictated to when you can do something but if your able-bodied peers can go do that whenever they want it seems a bit unfair to me yeah i guess i guess um, uh... question on, on 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 that certain time uh pe people with able bodies allowed to go on the ice while people with wheelchairs are on yeah, the, the way they set it up is like they allow you to go on the ice for that time um, and they'll let you bring your friends and family and stuff. But um, I think it's mostly like a wheelchair only session because there's there, there was perhaps some incident where they came up with a blanket rule against wheelchairs. So that's why I uh, included in my email to, to try to figure out why um, this, mm -hmm. this rule is and to try advocate that if you... If it is on a safety basis, that it does be done on a case by case basis. But yeah, I don't think a, a blanket rule is the way to go because, as I said, I was supporting the system that day and something that was put in place potentially because of an incident with wheelchair users before has negatively affected me uh, as someone supporting yeah. the disability. It's, it's, it's always. It's always good to understand the, the history behind it. And also, they can, you can tell him to, to reword it, it only if you're supporting someone with a disability. So you're, you're saying, David, that they should change the, the rules, they should change the law? Change the wording of the rules. Yeah. Because... Mm -hmm. Not telling him he can't go on, but he can. He can't go. Get, he can go on if he's assisting someone. Because why, and and the history of it, why? Yeah, like I, I do agree that you have to try gain the backstory from their end as to why something is the way it is, but also in that you try understand how can we come towards a solution that doesn't accidentally uh, segregate people or, you know, put people in these situations where they, um, you know, aren't as privileged as somebody who can walk? Because that, that fits the, the, the definition of discrimination if you're making people attend at different times or do things a different way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but look, I guess uh, look, segregation is never a good thing, especially for us people with disability. Because uh, segregation, it limits our, you know, in inclusiveness and it limits our communication with other people. So it's uh, we we should not uh, blend into society. We should become inclusive. That's, yeah, I yeah. think, very important. We need to, I guess, get rid of this discrimination. Um, yeah, that's, that's it's exactly terrible it. Thing. Yeah, it's not good to discriminate other, against others. Mm -hmm. We need yeah. to understand each other's needs. If you had someone that was able with you, I think they should allow you to go on with an able body. With an able body because you've got someone with you yeah yeah like i agree that could be a good thing but also do do you think it might be a bit uh, i'm not very good at picking the wording for this but like i don't feel it's right to make a person in a wheelchair have to go on with somebody because you know as wheelchair users we can be independent and i feel that's kind of like infantilizing someone if we're making them have 
For example, know. for example, if you've got a wheelchair, but you've got a motorized one, wouldn't that mm. make someone do donuts on the ice? Um. Yeah, look, uh, I, I guess I guess there is the, that way limit. But in saying that, look, I guess if you're using a manual chair, then it would be fine. Yeah, if you if you're using your like even if you use a power chair, if you use a pa your uh, mobility mm -hmm. device responsibly, then I see no problem with it. But um, mm -hmm. if you're going to be wanting to do donuts or something, then I can absolutely vouch for having a wheelchair only session where you can go mad on the ice and do donuts. But if you're just wanting to like skate around or something and um, you know most people when they go to ice rinks you don't see them doing crazy spins and stuff anyway, they're just kind of going around in circles on the ice. So if you're doing it like everyone else, I say it's safe, but if you're uh, running people over or doing donuts, then I understand why there'd be that rule. That, that's, that's probably why they, they don't want able bodies on at the same time. Because other people can get injured. Yeah, that, that's why I think we have to explain because that that's happened. Well, obviously, it, that, that something like that has happened and they've come up with this blanket rule, but explain that the blanket rule has its limitations because it affected myself as a person with a dis disability providing care to another person with a disability. So to say that it should be done by a case by case basis, or um, even if you just check with the person in the chair beforehand, like you let them know, hey, if you want to go on during an able-bodied session, uh, don't go crazy type thing. If you want to go crazy, we have a go crazy session on this day type thing. So yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Just a, a comment from Sarah. So Sarah has shared a story with us in terms of like discrimination. So um, she, she said that she was in the art gallery. I go when no one else is there, so I have room to move on my wheelchair. The security guard did a trust that my wheelchair wouldn't, wouldn't hit the artwork. Long story, but oh, she refused to leave my side. She walked in front of my wheelchair, not letting me move. I kept smiling and being quiet, but then she called for help. The person came and just watched me. Uh, they chatted with me and left. Then a second time, the guard called for help. She kept saying I was too close. Um, then we have another comment. So yeah, gotta continue. Um also I am not allowed to audition for stage shows, well. So I started my own production business last year. So we all can perform together. All this year I've been tested like the poor disabled girl who's just doing this to stay occupied. Um no, I am talented and I'm running a proper business. Yeah, look, uh, so, um, yeah, if that shouldn't be the case, everyone has uh, the right to freedom, everyone has the right to, you know, be independent, uh, and, yeah, the guy shouldn't have done that. What are your thoughts? Sarah, I think the guard was trying to keep by his side in case you don't bump into something so it doesn't create damage to something that you're gonna have to pay later that's fair enough david but um we're, we're pretty responsible i mean yeah I know. Uh, we're pretty responsible with the way we we could draw our wheelchair yeah yeah can i just interject there and i'll i'll explain maybe david but for us wheelchair users, and it also extends to any other mobility device, um, our wheelchairs or crutches, canes, they're like an extension of our body. So we're generally pretty aware of where our bodies and wheelchairs are in space and we know not to hit things. Um, That's a good so, point. Yeah, I feel, for Sarah, I'm sorry that you've had that experience and I hope that you... Um, have emailed these people to let them know what they did wasn't right because in my opinion it's 
coming back to this word again, infantilizing it. It's treating you like a child, like a toddler, assuming that you're not capable of being independent and looking after yourself just because you use a mobility device. Um, I guess a way I can make this relate to you, David, I'm not sure if you use a cane to help you navigate, but have you... I do. Had, I use a cane. Yeah, you use a cane to navigate. So, for instance, say you're in an art gallery, um, but, like, you're able to navigate along the, the floor and stuff. You're obviously going to hit things if there's paintings on walls, but, like... I would try you feel, not to, but... Uh, yeah, you try not to, yeah. If I go to art gallery, I make sure someone's with me. Yeah, you'd, you'd have so someone with you, but they, um... Okay, so you have one person with you. What about if you had an, maybe two security guards assigned to you as well as the person assisting you? Would you feel that's a bit too Why much? Be too well, much. I'll feel uncomfortable. Yeah, it, it does feel uncomfortable because you feel like you're being treated like a child. Like you know, as a person with a disability, you generally know your body and your limits pretty well. And Look. I think the problem comes from people assuming your abilities or lack thereof. Uh, what yeah. what I what I think I think should, should have happened the security or someone from the art gallery should have spoken to her and told her can we assist you around and I, and, and and explain the situation and if that that would have been an easier and more mellow task. Yeah, but yeah, no, um, right, again, no. advocating for Sarah, she said that she, um, you know, could get herself around and they didn't listen. But um, go, go on, Ibby. No, look, I, I guess uh, David's uh, right. I go, David, uh, just to ask for that assistance. And if there's, if uh, Sarah uh, says no, I'm, I'm like, I'm good, uh, then just move on. They don't need to follow her. Um, I'm pretty sure we're, we're pretty experienced with uh, using our mobility devices. And so in saying that, we're not going to go and smash into the walls. Um, well, everyone uh, deserves the right to visit the art gallery. They deserve the right to move around. Um, I've used, I use a power of the wheelchair and I navigate it uh, okay. I've never had a problem. We treat, we treat it as if, like Tim said, it's our own body. So we're, we're very careful the way we use our mobility devices. And so that's very important. Um, if, if, uh, if so, you did go and, I guess, damage some of the, I guess, stuff that are there, then they'll probably um, put you like on, on a warning or something, or maybe ban you, but you've never had any problems, have you, Sarah? So there's no need for them to, you know, interfere. Maybe if they, you know I mean? they ask you, and then if he says you don't need any help, they can watch you from far. In case you need yeah, why would they need to watch her from a farm? In, in case she needs help. Well, she, I'm pretty sure we we have a voice and we can ask for help when we need it. Because I remember once I went to the art gallery, not that I can see anything, and they, they got someone to walk me around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's all good to draw and, a comparison. Sorry, but you go on. No, no, I'm, and I'm saying that's uh, it's good that you're getting assistance, uh, David. But people have different disabilities and yeah, no, different no, levels no. of you know supporting needs. Uh, 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 and uh, yeah, you, sorry. you can probably with a wheelchair, you can feel like you're <laughs> you <laughs> they're, they're putting you down by following you. Yeah? But with my with my situation being blind, I I I, I, I accepted the assistance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was just about to say that. Um, although we can draw some comparisons, and I can try um, mm -hmm. give examples to help you understand, because you're a person who can walk. 
Um, mm. I do understand that you need assistance in different ways, so that's where we have to understand that different disabilities do need, need different levels of assistance. Like, yeah, you will benefit from someone walking you around and even potentially explaining to you what's in front of you if you need visual descriptions of things. Um, yeah. But if you're a person in a wheelchair who is sighted, we generally don't need that sort of assistance. So, yeah, di with disability, it's a tricky thing because there's no one size fits all approach. It's you have to that's, that, that's why you have to like tailor how you work to the person. So, that, my advice that, to anyone what... watching this who's not disabled is just ask people with disabilities what they need yes. if they have any assistance that they would like, um, and if they it, it they know. Always... Except that. Yeah. Always ask, how can I assist you? If you do need assistance. Yeah, always always ask before giving assistance. Um, especially yeah. regarding, yeah. like, don't touch people's wheelchairs without asking permission. Um, if you are going to help someone with impaired vision, um, yeah. ask if you yeah. can help them before you grab them, because I know some people grab Yes, um, yes. I've, I've, yeah. I've had that. I've had that many times. They, yeah, yeah. They, they, they think then that you know, they know where you want to go. Yeah. So they cross you the road the way they think you want to go, and then they lose you. Yeah, yeah. And I imagine that would be very frustrating because you're obviously being taken in the in a direction that you don't want to go. So, yeah. And and then you've got to find your way back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. if anything, it can make it more disorientating because now you've lost your way type thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, assumptions are a dangerous. You've lost your familiarity, you're not familiar where you are anymore, and then you've got to find your way back. Yeah, so just a comment from us, Sarah. This is the case for every human being. Like kids all being expected to learn the same at school. Etc. Exactly. I agree. I agree. Exactly. I agree. And yeah. Georgia, when, when you're discriminated against, it's just not right. Because it does impact on our, you know, mental health as well. Just one yeah. comment. Exactly. One unnecessary comment can ruin a person with disabilities day. It can change the way they uh, live their day. So it's important to know that unnecessary comments are not necessary. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah, like, no, it could be yeah. just... Go on, David. It's like, it's, it could be like... It could be like me crossing the road the other day at the crossing and the, the I think it was a female she, 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 she looked at me and, yeah. Hmm. Like, yeah, all right. Like, like, seriously, man. Like, you're really blind. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. Like, uh, and that, that, like, um, all, 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 leads into your next all, all point. Of, um, it, yeah, sorry for cutting you off there. Can you repeat that, David? What did you say? Well, what did you all say? Did, all, 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 they, me? Yeah, yeah. I'm walk, walking across the road. Someone, some, some, some person, they looked at me and like, like as in, they gave me a sigh as in, like, really, you're blind? <laughs> like, hmm. Like, seriously. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, <laughs> and totally like, smile back at him. <laughs> smile, smile, smile back at him. Didn't let it get to me. Yeah, yeah. 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 But it was unnecessary, and it could make you feel, uh, I guess, low. Yeah, it could make you feel upset on that day. Yes, and just, uh, yeah, it's just change the way I guess your mood. And that for us, for people with disability, we we need to be positive. But we keep getting barriers along the way that changes like, the like outcome Jonathan. of how we spend the day. Yeah, Johnson was telling us the other day that people think, like, they talk to him like in a slow manner because he, 
Vocês não pouco espaço, vocês não vão? É. Você não gosta disso? Você não gosta disso? As pessoas falam para mim propriamente. Eu falo diferente, mas você pode falar para mim propriamente. Eu lembro que o Johnson foi discriminado contra isso. And and how does that make you feel, John? That makes you feel upset. It makes you feel less valued as a human being. It makes me feel divided mm. because instead of people hearing the. Content of what they say, they make stereotypical assumptions mm. based so on stereotypical assumptions. Yes. Yeah, and it makes you feel devalued. It makes everybody feel devalued, especially when yeah, that people, me... people talk down on you. They talk down on you. They they think that you're, yes, you're not as as worthy you. as they are. And, yeah, because and, you're and, somewhat and, different. But should we, that be the case? It shouldn't be the no, case. No, we gotta. We, We've got to put other people's feelings in place. Always mm. think before you do something. Mm. Put yourself in their position and think how would you want others to treat you before you do exactly. something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, treat others how you'd like to be treated yourself, really. Mm. So, Tim... What can people do if they're faced with discrimination? Um, what people can do if they're faced with discrimination, uh, firstly, have a calm conversation with the person or business or whoever has discriminated against you um, try to tell them in an educational way um, why what they've done isn't um, the right thing to do and how they can do the correct thing uh, if they don't want to take that advice or listen to you um, Your next steps are you can go to the Human Rights Commission. Uh, you could also go to a disability law firm and ask for advice. And they can probably point you in the direction of getting your, your case sorted better than what you could yourself. Because sometimes, most of the time, I find people are receptive to what you have to say. But there will be the odd person who goes on the defensive and doesn't want want a bar of it. So if you come across that type rarely, that's when you'll have to go to um, someone higher up to, to get assistance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, sure. And also, okay, speak up. Um, use your voice. Very important. Um, if you do get exactly. discriminated against, speak up. Yeah, yeah, and to add to that, that, that it, don't it just is cop very... it on the chin. Don't, don't just cop it on the chin. Talk your mind. Yeah, But don't yeah, be exactly. rude about it. It's better to be calm and forward without Full being rude. Political. Because if you be rude, then then you're going to be rude back. Exactly, exactly. So, Timothy. What what do you do if self advocating doesn't work? Yeah, if if um, self advocating doesn't work, like you've taken the approach of being calm, you've tried to to tell people um, how to to write the situation, and they don't listen. That, that's when I said that you have to go to um, the Human Rights Commission because they can advocate for you in situations like that, and they have specialized teams who deal in um, disability discrimination cases all the time 
and yet uh, if your case is um i guess severe enough that's when it might potentially go to court and then you'd probably see some changes in that way but when mm-hmm. with people with disabilities we advocate for change we're not just being whiny disabled people um the changes that get put in place to protect people with disabilities extend mm-hmm. to everyone so for instance if an able-bodied person got cancer and they were being denied um some money packages from like their work um on the basis of them needing time off um they'd be protected mm-hmm. under the disability discrimination act because they're being discriminated against because of a condition outside of their control um also another example of how disability um supports in society benefit everyone else um, i always refer to the curb cut effect so mm. those cuts that you see in the sidewalk um, that allow wheelchair users to access uh, pathways and footpaths they can be used by multiple mm. programs people's on people on bikes um mm. it's just an example of people how people with a vision impairment yeah yeah people that have vision impairment as well impairment. yeah that's an example of how um things put in place to help people with disabilities can also help everyone else in society and tactile yeah. indicators yeah yeah and tactile indicators they're also good for um wheelchair users because they like slow you down if you're getting too much speed going down a ramp so there's many uses for them exactly and exactly and so I agree as well um she she right exactly what's good for us benefits everyone So yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, so on that topic, uh is there any final words you want to say? Yeah, I think um, um the final thing we should say is it is very tiring to have to advocate for yourself sometimes. Um I'm experiencing it now having to advocate for my sister to be able to have her brother come on the ice rink and help her out like it's something I shouldn't have to do but it's it's something I have to do if I if I want something to change so just yeah. try to remind yourself if you don't speak up nothing will change but also don't bottle it up and don't keep it to yourself talk to other people with disabilities talk to your friends talk to your family it's important to have people who can support you and also get behind you and advocate for you as well because fighting the battle alone just makes it so much harder but if you have a community behind you it makes it so much easier yeah yeah it's always good to look and, after your mental health and uh, and don't don't assume and present people's conditions always mm. be sensitive about other people's situations Yeah, yeah yeah says so go ahead do it there I was just I was just agreeing um I think that's all for me regarding this topic for now but mm. we've had a really good insightful discussion and you have given me some different perspectives to help me in my own advocacy with what I'm working on now so I think this has been a really valuable conversation Yeah, yeah, very good stuff, very good uh, stuff. Please like and share if you can. Good stuff, good You've stuff. You've been watching Group Chat, your weekly podcast for everything disability. Thank you for listening to us today. And we will see you next week, I guess. Yeah. yeah see you next week, everyone. Bye, Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.